Taiwan TV's Roby Reporter asks another question of the person on the street. Today's question, if you eat one pizza a day, how long will it take to eat 1,000 pizzas? Uh, it's less than three years. Let's say three years. About three years. You're right. Almost three years. How long will it take to eat one million pizzas? Uh, a lot longer than that. About 25 years. Uh, 12 years. It'll take about 2,700 years. How long will it take to eat one billion pizzas? Well, you see, if it'll take you about three years to eat, what, a thousand? And to eat a billion, it'll take you like 300 years. A billion, that's nine O's, so then it would be uh, uh, 30,000 years. If you eat one pizza a day, it'll take about 2,700,000 years to eat one billion pizzas. <laughs> She's unbelievable. One billion. One billion is one thousand million. One million seconds is only about eleven and one half days. But one billion seconds is almost thirty-two years. One billion. This is the Michigan Stadium, the largest college-owned football edifice in the world. On autumn Saturday afternoons, 101,701 fans gather here to cheer on their team. When the stadium is empty and just to keep busy, a lone cheerleader places one ping pong ball in the corner of the end zone. Do you know how many ping pong balls it would take to fill the Michigan Stadium to the top? Yes. It would take about 24 billion ping pong balls to fill the Michigan Stadium. Come on. Yeah. Producers, they weren't very pleased. Look, I don't think it's too much to ask that they put fresh flowers in my dressing room every day. Do you? No, <laughs> but it isn't up to me. Look, See, are they going to put fresh flowers in my dressing room? No, but they said they'd let the gardener start a compost heap in your closet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> mm. And now, time again for America's gamiest game show, but who's counting? And here's America's gamiest host, Monte Carlo. Hi, math fans. Welcome back, and thanks for those swell words of introduction. Without further ado, let's meet today's contestants. Who are you, sir? Well, hey, Monty, I'm Buck R. Ruse. That's Buck Ruse. Mighty proud to be here. <laughs> Shut up! Oh, and let's meet your opponent, who is? I'm Mr. Control. Mr. Control. Do you have a first name? Wow! <laughs> wow! 
<laughs> so uh, you would be, uh, well, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you would be out of control. Yeah, but only when I lose on TV game shows. I see. So it's the Old West versus the New West. You kids at home, get pencil and paper ready and play along with us. I am going to spin this wheel five times. Your job is to place each number that comes up on the place value holder. And the object of today's game is to create the smallest possible five-digit number. Now, in today's game, we're going to have a wild spin. After the fifth spin, you can replace any one of your digits with a number that comes up on the wheel. But remember, except for the wild spin, once you place your digits... You can't change it! Dig it! Here we go with the first number. We are looking for the smallest possible five-digit number. The first one is a, a five. Five. Here we go with the second digit. Round and round she goes where she stops. Who knows? Who knows? And the second digit is a... A five. Five. Match that. I wonder what the chances of that are. This is your number one offstage guy again, and I'm wondering what the my heck I'm out of control is thinking. Why would he put the fives there? It's a two. Third digit is a two. Place your twos. Buck Aruz has figured the chance of getting a zero or a one are not good and has elected to put his two in the ten thousands place. He has assured himself of a pretty low number. Four. Fourth digit is a four. Place your fours. Out of control is still gambling that he can get a number less than two. Let's see if his thinking will pay off. Three, the fifth digit is a three, all right. This is the moment we find out if this has been a wheel of fortune or a dial of disaster. This is the wild spin. If you decide you want to replace one of your digits, pull it off now. Mr. Control removed the three, hoping that a smaller number will come up. Buck R. Ruse is playing it safe and replacing one of the fives. Zero. It's a zero. Place your zero. Okay, let's see who has the smaller five-digit number, Mr. Roos. Well, Monty, that was one wild spin, but heck, <laughs> I teamed it. I got 24,053. 24,053. Woohoo! Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Shut up. Oh, and Mr. Control. Monty, I I've got 2,455. 2,455. An incredible gamble by Mr. Out of Control, and it has paid off in one of the most dramatic finishes these tired old game show eyes have ever seen. Mr. Control has pulled victory from the jaws of defeat. It was a great game, but great shot time is up, and we gotta be off. Congratulations to you both. To our runner-up goes an air-cooled round of Swiss cheese, and to our winner, a popsicle, a mobsicle, and a pizzicle. Yeah. That's it for now. We must up, Scotty, and may the math be with you. Bye-bye. So I, Jacques Justo, set out in search of the giant squid. So now reading. The ocean floor is 28 meters. Très bien. Très bien. And uh, right at speed. Do rest at 20 knots, sir. Excellent. Perhaps now is the moment we have all been waiting for. You mean, yes, the moment we turn off that obnoxious music. Oh, a little bit of that goes a long way. Uh, oh, excuse me, Mon Capitan, it's uh, my first voyage, and I was just wondering. Yes, my friend. Uh, uh, according to my calculations, we're, we're very close to an iceberg. How close are we? Uh, ten centimeters. Ten centimeters. Sacre bleu, engines for reverse! Engines for reverse! Secure the hatches! Secure the hatches! Secure the hatches! Hold the mail! Hold on, everybody, this will not be fun. Now, let me see this iceberg face to face. 
Something is fishy. Something is très, très fishy. Monsieur Navigator, where is this iceberg? Oh. Oh, oh. It's exactly 10 centimeters away, Mon Capitaine. Are you sure of this? Sir? I'm positive. Come, look. See? This X on the map represents the ship. That's mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Then I found this triangle. That represents the uh, uh, iceberg. Uh -huh. So I took this meter stick and I measured the distance from the X mm -hmm. to the triangle and it measured exactly 10 centimeters. Take a look at uh, for yourself. But monsieur, one centimeter on a map does not represent one centimeter in the real world. Uh, it doesn't? Of course it does not. If one centimeter on a map represented one centimeter in the real world, then the map would have to be as big as the area it was mapping. A map of New Jersey would have to be as big as New Jersey. Try to fit that in your glove compartment. I, I don't drive, thank you. Now on this particular map, we have a scale of one centimeter to ten kilometers. This means that one centimeter on a map represents 10 kilometers on the high seas. Which means that when the meter stick reads 10 centimeters... We have to do a calculation. If uh, one centimeter represents 10 kilometers, then 10 centimeters represents 10 times 10 kilometers, which is... Um, 100 kilometers, which means in actuality, this iceberg is 100 kilometers away. Oh, am I relieved? Thank you. Oh, Midable, you have mastered the map. Congratulations. Now back to your uh, duties. Uh, fromage. Yes. Uh, Steady as she goes, Capitan. Thank you. And so we head out to sea. The little problem solved by mathematics. The ship sustained no severe damage, but... Uh, Mon Capitaine! Mon Capitaine! Yes, monsieur. This is fantastic. According to my calculations, the giant squid is only 240 kilometers away. Très bien. And our home port is only 25 kilometers away. My rubber ducky, Melvin, is 2,466 kilometers away, but my karate school is 16,824 kilometers away. Oh, oh, and my The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Wednesday, 4.47 p.m., and already baseball fans were talking about the distinct possibility of the Yankees and the Mets getting set to play a Subway series next fall. Why anyone would want to play baseball on a Subway was beyond me, but New Yorkers are weird. I was working the day watch out of MathMet. My partner is George Frankly. The captain is Joe Greco. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We had come from Los Angeles, so we were used to, well, strange crimes. But New York had outdone itself. Somebody was clear-cutting parking meters throughout the island of Manhattan. At first, we couldn't figure out why anyone would want to do that. Then Captain Greco said, The city of New York is not only losing money on the collections, parking meters are expensive to replace, $325 a piece. Good luck. But our luck wasn't that good. We talked with an eyewitness who saw the crime being committed. I didn't know it was against the law to cut down a parking meter with a chainsaw and throw it in the back of a pickup truck. I guess it is, huh? We thought we had spotted a pattern in the robberies and staked out what we believed to be the next area to be hit. We were wrong. The parking meter massacre happened, but it happened where we weren't. While we continued to look for patterns, things weren't going well for my partner. George, what's wrong? That was my wife. Martha? Yes, we've been robbed. robbed. Someone broke into George's apartment and swiped a bunch of small appliances. Welcome to New York. We learned that a number of apartments in George's building had been robbed and the goods were put in a small van. Not much to go on and we didn't have time to work on it anyway. We were after the parking meter robber. Suddenly, we got a break. Math, Ned, frankly. Who? Why? When? Where? We'll be right there. Partner, maybe my luck is changing. That was a man named Modoc, Blondes Modoc, and he just saw something interesting. Which was? He saw the major and minor emergency service van, and more importantly, he has a description of the driver.
What seems to be the problem? This isn't my dress. My dress was silk. This is cotton. According to the ticket, this is your dress. That's $20. $20? Hey, costs a lot to clean a silk dress. But this is cotton. I thought you said your dress was silk. I did, but this dress is ugly. What's this design? Looks like the back of a pig. Now I know you're crazy. Everyone knows you can't turn a silk dress into a sow's rear. Next. Hi, I'm George Frankly, Mapnet. This is my partner, Kate. Monday. Mapnet. Lons Modak, dry cleaner. You said you saw the major and minor appliance van. Yeah. I was reading about the robbery in the New York past. It was like magic. But about a half hour later, the van they described it in the paper pulls up and parks right there. You sure it was the van? Oh, yeah. When he got out, he took the signs off the van and put them inside. From that little exposure, you think you could give us an accurate description of the driver? Oh, absolutely. His driver comes into my establishment. To pick up some cleaning? No, he, he wanted to change money for the parking meter. So you gave it to him? <laughs> no, of course not. I'm not ready to change for the parking meter store. No, I told him to take a walk. And so he says to me, oh, oh, I forget. I have some change in the van. So he leaves. Will you describe him to us? George took the description of the van's driver from Blonde's Modoc. We would have the crack artist from the NYPD do our rendering and then distribute it. It was a long shot, but when you're solving a difficult problem, sometimes you've got to use many tools. Thanks very much, Mr. Modoc. You've been a big help. Any time. It's always a pleasure to help a mathematician. Ah, uh, excuse me. Looks like the ever-vigilant traffic department is on the ball. It's nice to know that criminals can't get away with over-parking. Thursday, 9.43 a.m., and I was anxious to talk to Benny Pill and find what he found. Good morning, team. Hi, Kate. Morning, Fart. How are you, Benny? Oh, I'm okay. I was up all night following our bureaucrat, Mr. Moose, the parking meter maven. This your report? Right. I was just eyeballing it, Kate. My, what a busy little bee. Yeah, I didn't want to get too close. I didn't want to look suspicious. Uh-huh. First you went to dinner at Hamburgers on Fire? Yeah, it's a Cajun restaurant. They feature blackened burgers floating in a hot sauce. He ate two of those? And he drank two gallons of water. Then he went to the movies. He saw Beverly Hills Cop XVII. Then he went to Columbus Avenue, had an ice cream at Calories Are Fun. Doesn't he ever go home? Then he went home. Then he got his chainsaw, got in a pickup truck, and started cutting off meters. Then he stayed home. He didn't go out again? Nope. He went Betty by. Mm -hmm. I watched that building all night long. Well, maybe he just took the night off. NG, Kate. NG? No, no good. good. Another 125 meters bit the concrete near the South Street seaport. Maybe we better talk with Mr. Moose. What's this all about? We understand you schedule parking meter collections. That's right. Just what do you do after you finish making the schedule? Usually I smile, knowing I've done a crackerjack job. When do you distribute the schedule? The following morning. I hand all the collectors and their supervisors a copy. You copy the schedule in your office? No, I use a service. Copy and brew. I go there, get the copies done, and hold them until distribution. About how many copies do you make? I make exactly 86. Truth be known, I was about to get that chore done right now. Mind if we join you? Not at all. <laughs> Same number again, Mr. Moose? Yes, Peter, 86. 86 it is. 86 it is. <laughs> you like the copy business, Mr. Pickwick? Oh, yes. Of course, 
It isn't very original. <laughs> Copy person's joke. Copy person's joke. Uh-huh. Tell it a lot, do you? Oh, sure. Of course, at conventions, it can get pretty tired. Pretty tired. They have copy persons conventions? You bet. I just got back from one a month ago in Walla Walla. Walla Walla. I'd like to use your joke, you know, about copying not being very original, if you won't mind. Be my guest. Be my guest. Here you go, Mr. Moose. Eighty-six. <laughs> Eighty-six. Thank you, Peter. See you tomorrow. Notice anything funny in there? You mean besides Peter Pickwick? I mean about the copy machine. What about it? I looked at the counter. You know the gadget that tells how many copies it makes? Yes, 86, right? No, it registered 87. One extra. Peter Pickwick may be our crook. May be our crook. Let's put a tail on him. Put a tail on him. I'll call Benny and we'll set up a stakeout. Right. Hello, can I speak with Benny, please? Yeah, Benny. I'll be a son of a sea cook. We'll meet Benny out front. Our van was spotted again, Kate. Where? West 49th Street, in front of a coin dealer. From the description, it sounds like the same driver. Did he get the license number? No, but he said the driver came in to do some business, and when he left, he put two magnetic logos on the truck's doors. Major and minor appliance? Exactly. We'll catch him, Pard. We'll get your stuff back. I hope so. I'm getting tired of watching TV through binoculars. How's that? Oh, I use Martha's opera glasses and look across the alley at my neighbor's set. Doesn't that bother your neighbor? Well, it didn't seem to until last night when I yelled across and asked him to turn the volume up. Let's get going. We don't want to keep Peter Pickwick waiting. Waiting. Is that the guy? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. wondering what all these parking meters are doing here. Doing here. No, we have a pretty good idea what they're doing here, Mr. Pickwick. I was babysitting them for a friend. A friend. I don't think so, Mr. Pickwick. Are these your chainsaws? No. All I know about chainsaws is what I see in the movies. Mr. Pickwick, mind if I have a look at your hands? Well, I... Earlier in the day, I noticed you have an unusual set of calluses. Calluses which could be caused by excessive chainsaw use. 
Okay, you got me. Got me. Why did you do it, Peter? Did you really make that much money from the change in the meters? Hey, 10 pounds of quarters here, 20 pounds of dimes there. Pretty soon you're talking big money. Almost $20,000. <laughs> Plus. Yes. yes. I was about to start a mail-order used parking meter company and sell to small municipalities that can't afford new ones. <laughs> what do you think I can get? Think I can get? 10, 10 to 20. 20. 10, 10 to 20. 20. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, you say can and will use Looks like we've solved another one, pard. Another one, pard? Meh. <laughs> 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 Want to share a good joke with a partner? Remember that dopey reporter's at my apartment the day I got ripped off? Mike Malice? Uh-huh. Listen to this. One of the coins was a two-headed George Washington quarter. It was misstamped at the Denver Mint in 1932, and the coin gives the impression that it features both the father and the mother of our country on it. The coin is worth half a million dollars. Pretty funny, huh? <laughs> Those coins weren't valuable. Where would Mike Mellis get an idea like that? I don't know. You put him on? I put him on. George, you're a caution. Yeah, I guess. Hello, math netters. Hello, Captain Greco. Hi, Captain. Don't tell us. You've got another case for us already. Not another case, Kate. The same case. What do you mean? A parking meter just got knocked over on 25th and Madison. Maybe you arrested the wrong guy. The wrong guy. One hundred percent Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. For a